Hey everybody, how's it going? For this first video on the channel, I've decided to tackle the question, you bought the title of Lord, Lady, or Laird, and a piece of land in Scotland? That's a scam, right? I've decided to do some research into providing a valid answer to this question. As part of this research, I've made such a purchase through Highland Titles in Scotland. There's some reasons why I chose this entity over others, which we'll get into later, but for now, let's get elbow deep into the research. So what's the premise behind the idea of purchasing a title in Scotland? Essentially, the process behind it is this. An entity in Scotland will sell a portion of land known in Scottish law as a souvenir plot to the individual, and will argue that Scottish tradition says that those who are landowners are traditionally referred to as lairds, which translates to lord in English. The female equivalent in both environments is lady. In my case, I purchased a 10 square foot plot of land in Loch Arbor and one square foot plot of land in Glencoe. Highland Titles has provided me with a document saying that I am Lord Aaron Roth, Lord of Glencoe and Lord of Loch Arbor. Cool. But what does the law say about this? It must be said first and foremost that I'm no lawyer nor paralegal, neither here in Canada nor in Scotland. But I do know something about the way that the law works and the institutions of the UK government and aristocracy. Let's begin with what the law says about the notion of purchasing noble title. Probably the first element is this. If you genuinely believe that you purchasing a $54 square foot, one, one square foot plot of land anywhere in the UK automatically entitles you to sit in the House of Lords or to be invited to the UK peerage picnics, my advice to you is this. Make an appointment with your family doctor immediately requesting an MRI of your skull because something is clearly not right up top. No website anywhere can make you a genuine copper bottom peer of the United Kingdom or Scotland. That right flows from one source and one source only. The font of all honor, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors. Going further, don't bother asking for a legal coat of arms from the Lord Lion the authority responsible in Scotland for authorizing grants of arms, which suggests that you are a peer of the realm just because you bought the one square foot of land from Highland Titles. You won't get it, and you might get a nasty phone call for your troubles for trying to do so. The Lord Lion has made it very clear that purchasing of a souvenir plot does not qualify one to be recognized as a laird in the official stud books of UK nobility. The Lord Lyon made comments specifically in relation to the Scottish title of Laird that ownership of a souvenir plot does not bring with it the right to the description such as Laird, Lord, or Lady. Laird is not a title but a description applied to those living on and around the estate. There's no official recognition of the name of an individual as the Laird of X. Ownership of a souvenir plot of land is not sufficient to bring a person otherwise ineligible for seeking a coat of arms. This is an important piece. Fair enough. So by purchasing the land, you won't be a member of the official institutions of the UK or Scottish government or establishment with the legal or hereditary privileges that go along with it. That point is very clear. But does that mean you can't actually be another kind of lord or lady in Scotland? Let's leave that for a moment to talk first about the law of property in Scotland. First, what is a souvenir plot? Scottish law makes reference to souvenir plots of land to be sure, describing them in section four of the Land Registration Scotland Act of 1979 as relating to land which is a souvenir plot, that is a piece of land which, being of inconsiderable size or no practical utility, 
is unlikely to be wanted in isolation except for the sake of mere ownership or for sentimental reasons or commemorative purposes. Pretty much the definition of a souvenir, right? When considering ownership over these types of plots, one legal website, hg.org, argues that it's important to note that in Scotland, there are two types of property ownership that are different. These two types are real and personal right. Real property ownership is the practice of registering land and is recognized in Scotland as full and true ownership. Personal rights over property are enforced by contract between the purchaser of the personal right and the real owner of the land. The one who has a personal right can sue for their rights against the one they have contracted with. However, unlike real property ownership, they don't have absolute rights in relation to third parties, nor can they register their land. So wow, things really don't seem to be looking so good for this not being a scam. It's looking like a scam, right? Well, actually, things are far, far more often than not just fine for those who want to make a purchase of this nature, at least with this particular entity. What's been said previously really doesn't impact the situation for the vast majority of people who want to participate in buying a souvenir plot of land and getting the title Lord, Laird, or Lady. How's that? Well, the reality is that although the Lord Lion and the legal beagles may be correct about the nobility titles and the land issue in a true and formal sense, as these matters you know, relate to be acknowledged by Buckhouse and the Registrar of Lands, the reality is their opinions aren't really relevant or applicable to about 99.9% .9 of people who are simply looking to purchase these souvenir plots and the associated titles. Why is that? Well, there are some other ways of looking at these matters, ways that are kind of loopholes in the process. If one is okay with not being greeted at the airport by members of the royal household. First, Scotland has some very flexible rules in relation to how one refers to themselves. Scottish law allows people to call themselves anything, including Lord, Laird, or High Sensei of the Universe. As the legal website hg.org states, there's no need in Scots common law for a deed poll, a statutory declaration, or the like to change your name effectively. Further, the Lord Lion himself, in referring to the term Laird, indicated that it wasn't really a title, but more of a convention, where others refer to a Laird, which makes the term a description, not really some office bestowed by a central authority. The Lord Lion may render an opinion on what they think is appropriate, but this matter might be more fluid than it's actually coming off. Further to that point, if one isn't looking for an official coat of arms that refers or makes reference to them as a peer, the Lord Lion really doesn't come into the equation on this matter really at all. Enter a term that you may have encountered before in other environments. Courtesy title. Courtesy titles are a common instrument of honorific found in various parts of the world. They're an agreement, a convention. According to the Oxford Dictionary and others, a courtesy title is a title that does not have legal significance, but rather is used through custom or courtesy, particular, particularly in the context of nobility. The titles used by children of members of the nobility, for instance. This is what is being provided by entities such as Highland Titles. Lord Stephen Rossiter, on a number of morning TV shows that you can actually find on YouTube and in the Chicago Tribune, in one example, has said that the titles of Laird, Lord, and Lady bestowed by Highland Titles are only a courtesy title. It's not bestowed by the monarchy and it's a bit of novelty. The public understands that they're not buying regal heritage. 
it is repeatedly referred to both on the website and by Lord Rossiter amongst others as a bit of fun. This, my friends, makes all the difference in the world. And as far as the legitimacy of the titles being confirmed, I'd only say this. Something on the order of a quarter of a million people have bought into the process of Highland titles, never mind several other organizations that are performing similar services. Okay, sure, the Crown might not call the lairds, lords, and ladies to tea, but at what point does one ask when a title becomes legit? At what point does one ask when it becomes to legitimately impose a courtesy title? Other organizations bestow, bestow similar courtesy titles all the time. The Knights of Columbus, for example, bestows the title Sir on experienced members who have gone through certain initiation processes. So legally, and I would even argue legitimately, what many people agree that when many people agree to bestow courtesy titles upon persons who have met a certain set of requirements, I say it's a real thing. And so do hundreds of thousands of other people around the world. As far as the personal right over one's plot is concerned, the contract offered by Highland Titles, which is similar to some other similar entities in Scotland, is pretty clear. The contract says that the land is sold to the person who bought it. Further, the website of Highland Titles has this to say on the matter. Our customers obtain a personal right to their land. This is essentially a contract where we pass our rights to the land over to you. So you can visit your plot, you can call it your own, and essentially do what you please with the land within the normal confines of law. We do retain the rights to prevent the land from being used for hunting and shooting. And on the contract, and actually also, um, Highland Titles also retains the right for vehicular access if you're really far into the woods. Further, you can sell or pass on the contract as you can with any property. So the gift can be passed down the generations, not once, but forever. So, is Highland Titles a scam in saying that it is selling property and bestowing the title of a laird, lord, or lady upon the purchasers? Absolutely not. Highland Titles not only is exceptionally clear on their materials, contracts, and websites as to what it's all about, they have gone over and above to answer questions, respond to critics, and explain in intricate detail their position and their product. Highland Titles is also not a scam for the work that they are doing, which is really a central core of how they got started. They're a nature reserve. They're actually using the proceeds of selling the souvenir plots and titles for the purposes of restoring land, wildlife, and the ecosystem in Scotland. When you buy a chunk of land from them, you're actually contributing to a cause that all of us should be, even without a title or deed of personal right of property. Without a doubt, these efforts are why Highland Titles has received a 4.8 out of 5 rating from Trustpilot and a 5 star rating from TripAdvisor and as well as numerous certificates of excellence over the years. You don't get these things if you're a scam. Frankly, those that are claiming that it is a scam either have incredibly unrealistic expectations of the entity or are the folk who are trolling for one reason or another. Who am I? I am Lord Aaron, Lord of Glencoe and Lord of Loch Arbor, a proud member of the Highland Titles community and strong supporter of what they do.